fly rods two out of the three of those rods are uh, graphite rods and then one of them is a bamboo rod so this right here is the first rod it is a sage graphite three nine foot four weight rod the cork handle oh it's a great rod i usually use this rod for bluegill fishing a little bit of trout fishing and also this is a good rod to use for like light bass or small bass, like smaller bass flies, nothing too heavy because that'll make it hard to cast, but this is a great rod overall. It's a nine foot, and yeah, let's move on to the next one. The next rod we have here is a eight foot bamboo rod. My dad's friend made it for me. Um, it is a eight foot five weight. Um, bamboo, it's a little, it's on the heavy side compared to the graphite rods, but bamboo rods are great for small creek, like, dry fly fishing. I use it for bluegill under, like, like a nymph with a bobber. That works great as well. It's really slow action, so the bend goes all the way down to the, the butt of the rod. And overall, it's a great rod. It's heavy and short, but I like it a lot. Okay, on to the next one third fly rod I have is this Sage Graphite 3 uh, rod. It's a 9 foot 6 weight, so it's good for bigger bass. That's what I usually f use it for. I throw like my heavier bass bugs on it. That work It works great for bass. It handles them really well. It's a 9 foot rod. It's a 4 piece. The other um, Sage rod's a three, 4 piece as well, and the Bamboo rod's a 3 piece. Okay. Now let's move on to my flies. So I have two main fly boxes right here. This box right here is all my bass flies and my bluegill poppers or bass poppers. In this box I have all of like my trout stuff, my nymphs for bluegill, my and I got all these are dry flies up here for trout, which means they float on the surface. These are like woolly buggers that aren't weighted. You can use for trout, bass, blues, or anything. Got like a caddis dry fly for trout, and then my nymphs down here for bluegill. Now onto my reels. Here I have all of my fly fishing reels. Um, they're all they were all given to me. All my rods and reels were given to me by my grandpa's friend, and then the bamboo rod was given to me by my dad's friend. So most of the like all these reels are pretty old because they were his reels but they still work really well. So this is my six weight floating line. I use this one probably the most for, uh, but I don't miss, you gotta, you gotta match the the line of the, the weight of the line to the rod. So if this is a six weight line, I have to put it on my six weight rod. This is my six weight sink tip, so it sinks no matter what. I use this when I'm like fishing deeper for bass. And I use this one when I'm fishing like kind of shallower. I like this one better because you can see the bite better. I have my five weight floating line. This goes in the bamboo rod. Um, floating line, good for dry flies, which you want to use the bamboo rod for. I have my four weight sink tip line, which I use for like small bass if I'm fishing for them deep. And the sinking tip means that this, the tip of the fly line is a little heavier and it sinks. It's about 15 feet of that, I think. And here I have my full weight floating line, which I use this the most for my full weight rod. It works great for bluegill or small bass or anything. And the, the, the reels you see that don't have the bottom part of it are just because, especially for these two, there's an in interchangeable part that I can put on these two. So I do that if I want to switch up to a sinking line. Now we are going to move on to my accessories. So that includes like stuff to help the flies float, pliers, scissors, everything like that. So here I got my fly float. So this is something that you put on a dry fly.
to keep it floating on the surface because it's not going to work if it's sinking. So we already got some gink. It's like a silicon paste that you put on the fly before it gets wet. That, that'll help float. I also have some loon top rag, which is like a powder substance that you put the fly in after it's wet and it starts to sink and that'll help it float again. And here I just got another thing of gink. So here I got my things to cut line with. I got my scissors and I got my nail clippers. It's super easy to use. You can use any really type of nail clippers, scissors, knife, anything. Good to cut fishing line with. My hemostat pliers. These are really good for like small bluegill, trout. There's a lot more, they're smaller so they're easier to work with. They're a lot better to get like those, your little dry flies out, your little nymphs out. Or strike indicators, whatever you want to call them. These are just some thingamabobbers. They are one fourth inch or quarter inch. Um, they were great for bluegill, great for trout. They're really, really sensitive, which I like about them. They're light, so they're easy to cast. There's really nothing inside them but air. So that really helps the casting. And they're really easy to use. You can just, if you don't know how to use them, you can just look it up, but you just loop your line through and then put it around the whole thing, and that's all you gotta do. Now we're going to move on to my tippets. My tippets, this is what I tie on to my to the end of my leader. I got some 14, 12, 8, more 8, 5 and a half, 4, 4, 3 and a half, and some 2. Depending on what I'm going for, if I'm going for trout, I'll maybe tie on like a 2 or a 3 or a 4. If I'm going for bluegill, I'll probably tie on like a 6 or a 4. If I'm going for bass, I'll usually end my leader with a 14, a 12, or an 8. Thanks for watching this video. Um, we are open to any video ideas or suggestions. So please leave them in the comments. And see you in the next video. Way hunting and fishing and loving every day.